Hi, this is Jason with Atomic Disc, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use our t-shirt designer on our website. I've got the designer up here, and this is the default view, and the shirt color defaults to white. We can change our shirt color by selecting one of the four options here. But for this video, uh, I'm just going to demonstrate creating a design on a white t-shirt. I'm going to show you how to create a design using our built-in graphic icons and built-in fonts. I've created a fictitious band called Kung Fu Cassette, and we're going to create a quick design for that. I'm going to start by clicking on the Add Graphic button, and that's going to take us to an icon library. I'm just going to search here for Cassette. It looks like I have two options. I like this one. I'm going to choose this. And it just defaults to bringing the graphic to the center of the shirt. If I click and drag, uh, you'll see a little grid that will show up behind, and that just shows the total printable surface area on the shirt. I'm going to grab this corner and reduce the size a little bit, and when you reduce or enlarge the size, it keeps the image in proportion scale-wise. Just going to move that up. So when you click on the graphic, it will show you what ink color it's defaulting to. In this case, it's black. If I click on the ink color, the color palette shows up and I can choose a different color if I want. But for this shirt, I'm gonna just choose a black ink on a white shirt. You have several options uh, to manipulate the image as well. Uh, as you saw already, you can scale, you can rotate using the, if you click and hold the rotate icon here, just click and hold and drag, move your mouse. And if I didn't like that, I can use the undo button below. That'll take me back. If you've moved the graphic around and if you're unsure if it's centered, as long as it's highlighted, if you go down here, you can center the position of the object by using this X center. So I'm gonna re just scale down a little bit here, make sure I'm centered. Uh, you can also flip the image horizontal, which you can't tell in this case because it's symmetrical or vertical. And there's a duplicate button if I want to duplicate that image, but in this case I don't. I'm going to just X that out. Now I'm going to add some text using the text button here. And if I click out, it'll show the layer. And I can move it just like I did with the cassette. I'm going to center that. I'm going to change the font. So I'm just going to highlight it. Go over here to my palette where I can change the font options. And let's pick something that looks a little kung fu-ish here. How about this? Looks good. I can change the color by the ink color of that. Just change it to black. Move it up a little bit, make sure it's centered. You have some other options here as well. Um, you can change the font size, or I found it easier just to drag the, the corner. Center it. In this case, I wanna create a little bit of an arc. So I'm gonna click the text shape option, and I'm gonna choose the arch type. That looks good. And I'm gonna add another text layer as well. So I'm just gonna click on the white shirt, add text again. Move that down, go back to changing my font to the font I was using above. I'm gonna go back to my text shape. This time I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna go underneath here. It looks like the text is a little big, so I'm going to make that text a little bit smaller. Just kind of fit it in there. I change my ink color to black. Make sure it's centered. And there we have it, Kung Fu Cassette. This is a basic one color shirt design. If I wanted to make it a two color shirt design, I could certainly grab one of the elements and change the color. Let's say we want a red cassette. 
So that would be a two color shirt design. And if you've been looking at the price, it changes the price accordingly as well. So if I go back to black here, it adjusted the price back to just a one color design. Uh, we can print up three color design. So if I wanted to do a three color design, let's say blue, black, and red, that changes the price accordingly. So the designer basically sees three layers here. I've got my top text, my cassette, and my bottom cassette text. So there is a button here that says edit layer. And in this particular design, it's not really that important, but if I had layers that were overlapping each other, this changes the order of the layer and how they view on top of each other. So for example, if the Kung Fu were to overlap the cassette, and if I wanted the cassette to actually overlap the Kung Fu text, I would just move, select the layer and use the arrows to move it up and down. So now the cassette is on top of the text. So I'm happy with my design and maybe I'm not quite ready to purchase the t-shirts, but I wanna save my design. So there's a save design button down here. If I click on that and just enter in, let's call it Kung Fu cassette and I enter in my email save design your design has been saved we have sent you an email with details okay I'll check my email and there is a no reply it'll say from Inky Bay because Inky Bay is the company that actually makes the designer for us if I click on my save design email It'll show a preview. I can view my design, edit, or buy the design. Now, these buttons all go to the same thing. So if I just click on view my design, it will actually open up a new window. And reload the design just where we left off. So we have full control over this. And at this point, it preloaded all the elements, all the colors, just the way we left it. Then at this point, I could go ahead and make my quantities on sizes and add to cart and be on my way. Now let's say I wanna upload a logo or a file that I created elsewhere and I don't wanna use any of the elements built into the designer. I'm just gonna X these out here. Uh, there's an upload file button. Now keep in mind, the upload file button allows you to upload limited types of files. And really, to get the best result printing a t-shirt, you really need a vectored SVG file. But I'm just gonna give an example of what happens if I upload a JPEG that is not really to the quality standards that we need to print from. So I'm just gonna drag a JPEG I created in Photoshop here. And it gives us a preview. In this case, it's just black on white, but an option shows up to remove the white. Um, if I were to print on a gray t-shirt, for example, I wouldn't want this white behind here because it's just gonna show up as a white box. So I'm gonna say, yes, remove the white from your image. I'm gonna hit continue. And it shows the logo that I created. And see how small it is? That was the actual size I created it in Photoshop. Um, or maybe I downloaded the logo from a website or it was used for a business card or, or whatnot. Um, the designer actually needs a really high resolution image in order to print right. So if I try to scale it up, we're gonna get an error message. The error message says, warning, we need a better quality image, please upload, blah, blah, blah. So that's not gonna work. Uh, it's too small, it's not allowing me to, to uh, to size it up. So I would either one, have to recreate the logo at a really high resolution in Photoshop, or better yet, create an SVG vectored version of this logo, which I explain in this video here, a tutorial on exactly how to do that. And that's gonna yield a much better result than using a rasterized logo image that I created in another program. So I'm gonna X that out and I'm going to re-upload an SVG version of what you just saw. And it didn't give me the option to remove the white because in the program vectorizer that I used to create this, uh, I had already removed the white. So now when I zoom in, 
you can see how clean and crisp the logo is. It allows me to zoom in and out with no problem. And I can still change the ink color. And there you have it. That's using a vectored SVG file, which is really what we recommend. If you don't find a graphic or an icon in our library, our library is limited and we will be adding quite a few more images there over time. You can go to several websites and download free vectorized icons. If you just do a Google search for free vector icons, there's millions of them out there. And they all download in an SVG format and you can just upload those here and use them in your design. I hope that was helpful and we'll see you next time.